Um, I just want to start off by saying that um, I'm very appreciative to, appreciative to the people who have stuck by us during this hard time. It's been a very hard time for us the last four games. You can pinpoint a lot of things, but um, the one thing that I do know is that God doesn't make mistakes. And through all of the, um, the negativity or what's warranted, what's not warranted throughout this whole entire thing is these are still kids and they can have bad days. They can have bad games. They can have bad weeks. That doesn't mean that disconnection happens between a coach and a player because you're losing now. It's happened to plenty of teams over the years. It just seems like everything gets heightened here at Memphis. Um, I do this, man, because this was, I was chosen for this, not by the University of Memphis, but by God, honestly, to take this job when it was at its lowest moment. And the stuff that I read is really laughable, but I do respect everybody in here. I respect the entire city. I only want to do well for the city. I'm the first person that's going to be the hardest on myself when I don't do well for the city. It guts me because I want our city to be known for something other than what it's known for. I want this team to be the team, along with the Grizzlies, to help everybody around the city be happy because we know there are some tough times going on right now. So when we go on a four-game losing streak, man, I, I get no sleep. I'm as hard on myself as anybody. Um, I'm not, we're not trying to do it. Uh, and you can always work yourself out of situations. But I do know that everybody has an opinion, and I try not to go by that opinion. I just know that God is real and there's a plan for this team. And uh, I'm happy that I'm coaching this team, the best team I've coached. Uh, we got into a slump. It's called a slump, and now we get out of it with a tough, tough win. But the fashion in which we did so is who we are, and hopefully we'll be that moving forward. So I'm happy that we got the win in the fashion that we did. Now we have some positive tape to watch and uh, be able to move forward. Benny, David Jones scored 16 points in the last 739 of the game. In your six years here, I mean, how do you put in the words how special he was down the stretch? No, he was very special. You know, when we were in the huddle, we had just fouled down 12, you know, and uh, original, original was uh, going to the free throw line. He made both. We're down 14 with eight minutes to go. I just looked the guys in the face and go, we can still win this game. We've been doing a lot of situational um, things in practice, down 10 with four minutes to go, down eight with three minutes to go, up one. Up. We've been doing more of that because we feel like those things are going to happen now. It's getting closer to March. Those type of games happen. you got to be ready for them. And David Jones has been doing really well in those little sessions. So it doesn't surprise me that the game that he had at their place, that he was able to, to get hot today and be able to uh, knock down some baskets and pull us through. I mean, it's just we, we deserve this game. The four-game losses, we deserve those as well because we weren't doing what we were supposed to do. Today's game, we deserve this game. Hey, Coach, in the first half you had nine turnovers. In the second half you turn around and get three. What did you do different in the second half to take care of the ball better than you did in the first half? I think the one thing that we have to be, again, I stated it earlier, these are young men. These aren't, you know, they're, they're not perfect. So the pressure of losing is just like the pressure of winning. When you've lost and you're at home, it's way more pressure on you because you know that you're not supposed to be losing, especially to the teams. No disrespect to South Florida, no disrespect to Rice and all these other teams. At home, we're supposed to win those games. And the pressure is mounted. So when they play, sometimes the nerves are going to kick in. Then after halftime, we watch film, the nerves are gone, they get better, you know, and, they, and, and we go on. So I'm learning to deal with that more, especially with a team that really still doesn't know each other. We don't have a team that's been together three or four years, so it's going to be some turnovers in, the, in, the, in those situations. So we, we corrected it in the second half. Coach, back to David Jones for a second. Were you surprised at all with a guy that had the hot hand like that, that took over the game, that they didn't try anything, double teams, try to get the ball out of his hands? Were you surprised, first of all, and did you have a, a backup option there if, if Jones wasn't able to do what he did? Well, I can, I can speak from experience because I've gone into the locker room after we've lost a game where a guy had it going and I was like, why didn't I just double team him? It's easy to say when you're not in the first chair, not any disrespect to you. It's like you go with, we're, we're controlling the game and it happens so fast, you know, and, you know, to his credit, I'm thinking, I thought that before, like after the game, like, man, why didn't I double team that one guy more? So if they would have double teamed David, someone else would have had to step up and, you know, JQ hit the, a, a big three to, to put us up. So at the end of the day, uh, I mean, to tie the game at the end of the day, um, I, don't, I can't answer that, but I've been in that seat before. 
Penny, you mentioned you mentioned JQ's three pointer. I was going to ask you which shot was bigger because uh, JQ had been 0 for 12 up to that point from the field. Obviously, I think it put you guys up one, mm-hmm. um, and then well maybe not uh, it tied. And then David Jones obviously put you ahead for for good. Uh, which shot was bigger? I would say as a ball player, being 0 for and then taking the biggest shot of the night and making it. That shot is harder. David Jones was he was already in a in a rhythm. JQ could not get a rhythm. They were playing drop coverage. He was missing all of his mid range shots. He was missing all of his floaters. And he gets really down on himself. So for him to take that shot and make it at that moment shows who he is. So I would say that shot. And is there like when things are, you know, four four game losing streak and then coming out 0 for twelve, like do you say anything to him or do you uh, like what you know? gave him the confidence to take that shot? Just continue to tell him to be you. I mean, I've, I haven't had games like that where I've been over because I was a post-up player. I get to the foul line. I I just did it so many different ways. He's relying on a jump shot in that little mid-range, you know, the entire game because of the way that they're playing him. And he's going to have games where he's hot and he's going to have games where he's cold, depending on if he's making those shots. So I just keep positivity in his head. I would never say anything about don't shoot this or don't shoot that because I want to keep his confidence really high. And that's that's what we do every time, no matter if he's having a good game or a bad game, keep his confidence high. What uh, what was the moment or what changed in the second half where all of a sudden they started playing playing defense and, and kind of seemed to be caring even more and, and acting more like a team? Was it something somebody did, something somebody said, the combination on the floor? What it's just pinpoint? my speech to not quit. And that's that's the problem that we've been having. You know, I love my guys, man, but it's like if it's not a number next to the name, if it's not Texas or if it's not, it's like a lot of these guys really just, they don't get their juices flowing to play against. And it's just, I, I can't explain it because these guys have only been with me a couple, you know, a few months. So I don't, I don't know how you, I looked at every game like it was an important game. So we only activate when we get down. And you saw a top 10 team in the country in the last eight minutes playing defense down, communicating, not having any miscommunications at all, uh, trying to box out. Anytime anybody cut, they would hit the cut. Everything we've been asking for in this four-game losing streak, they did it the last eight minutes of the game today. We're very capable. It just can't be optional. You know, it cannot be optional. It has to be mandatory every single time. That's what I, I saw. What you saw, I go, wow. Why can't we do this the entire game? That's who we were early on, and we haven't been able to kind of regain that since Caleb got hurt. Coach, great win. Thank after you. the game, what did you say to your guys after coming out of this slump today? I said it's, it feels great to get off that losing train. First of all, I praised the guys that to stay in there, that stayed in there and fought, and uh, and got this victory for us because all we were looking for was one win, just one win to get us over the hump, and uh, have some tape to show from that. And you couldn't ask for a better tape. Obviously, we wish we would have came out, blown them out right away, and then say, hey, this was a statement game for us to just get back on top. To back to where we were, but it didn't work that way. And the last eight minutes is, is good enough for me. Penny, what's the vibe in the locker room like after the, the losing streak's finally over? Yeah, guys are relieved, honestly. It's, it's tough. I'm sure those guys felt a ton of pressure. It's not easy going from the – that's like polar opposites, man, to go from 10 in a row to losing four in a row, winning 10 in a row and losing four in a row. And, and in the fashion – that we lost those games. There was no team chemistry. There was no intensity. There was no energy at all in those four losses, and we still barely lost three out of those four. It was just trying to find a five, five guys, the energy and everybody in unison in that group, they did it. And now that the weight of this slump is, you know, off of their shoulders, uh, do you think this could be the game that kind of changes their, their mindset for good, that, hey, we're not going to let this happen again? Yes, I do. I think that what they're saying in there is like, it's time. They really bonded together in the huddle. Usually huddles are all kind of crazy on our, on our team. It's all kind of stuff going on in our huddles. But this huddle was looking at each other in the eyes, saying, don't quit, keep fighting, and it happened. Coach, I know you just mentioned um, that in the huddles you guys were talking more and uh, just staying together as a collective, but how do you kind of build off of this win and try to carry this momentum 
throughout the rest of the regular season and going into the conference play, well, conference tournament? Yeah, I think you build momentum because of the way, the fashion in which it happened. You know, we're coming back from down 14, what, eight minutes ago. That'll get anybody's juices flowing. If you're a ball player and you know, hey, this is exactly what we did. We have footage. They'll watch the games. We'll send that footage to their phones. And they could just stay. You still have to go play the game, but we know what we're capable of again because it, we lost it for four games. Coach, I saw Jaquan throughout the game hyping up his teammates. And maybe he does that every game. I just miss it. Has he kind of taken over that Caleb Mills role? Um, is he one of those guys that's helped team, team chemistry get back on track? Yeah, he's one of the ones for sure. I just I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't know the magnitude of Caleb Mills for this team until he went out. It's not like I didn't appreciate it because he was the guy that said, hey, I'll go to the bench, let Nick Jordan start. I'll still come out and do what I do. I'm still going to defend. I'm still going to do. We did not fill that void. And then after he went down, we started going bigger. We started going Malcolm, Naquan, Nick, more so than when we were winning. We were always small ball. And then tonight, guess what it was? That's what we, I think that's what we did, honestly, to go on that 10-game streak. We didn't have Naquan Tomlin, and we didn't have Jordan Brown. And we were just playing small ball, and that just brought it back to what we used to do. And with Caleb going out, this is the first time that we've actually finished the game small ball. Penny, a second straight game was today, especially felt like the defensive energy and effort was a lot better. But first half, you guys scored 24 points, obviously second half, 41. But do you feel like you found answers on that end other than get the ball to David and let him go to work? Yeah, that actually was never the offense. That's just David. You got to know David. He made it be about David mostly, but he's like a son to me, so I can say that. But it's, it's, it's been the ball has been sticking a lot in the four-game losing streak, eight assists, eight assists, ten assists more turnovers than assists because we're not moving the basketball. We tried to make a conscious effort today, even though you know, we only had 14 and 12 turnovers. It's still the guys are trying to make a conscious effort of just trying to move the ball more. And um, we have to. You know, we're only going to get better with it.